What's up, bozos? It's me, anime protagonist who is virtually indistinguishable from every other anime protagonist, but is called a hot guy for the convenience of the plot because he's confident and witty and has been on three dates before. Also, if anyone asks, yes, I do have sex, and yes, my dick is, in fact, fucking massive. Thank you. So what if I told you there's a new Origairu in town? But in this one, the whole main cast is hot. What if I told you someone went into an office meeting, some author, trying to get his career kickstarted and said, So what if I did Origairu again, but instead everybody is hot? Yeah, all right, Jim. Green light. Put that through. We're doing it. I introduce you to Chitose's in the Remune Bottle. Now, aside from the cast of characters who are aesthetically pleasing and hot, but otherwise forgettable, uh, this, this book is actually really fun. There's only one out in English right now, but I believe the seventh one, but actually the eighth one in total is about to come out in Japan. I love her. And the second... And the second volume is coming out in English in a couple weeks. Now, this isn't really anything to write home about, really, but... If I told you that I, if there was any light novel series that I was 100% certain is going to get an anime in the next two years, it's this one. Because I'm pretty sure it won an award in Japan, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is fun. But basically, this really is just Origairu. Like, if you fucking, if you skimmed these, th if, I found Yusuke. <laughs> if you skim these pages, you would find that in volume one alone, um, what happens is the main character, Chitose, our boy here, if I can find him, um, our boy Chitose, Saku Chitose, basically goes through the motions as uh, the new class president of a second year class to basically get this kid who's like a huge otaku and has been staying home from school for a couple months to basically get out of his shell, gain some confidence in himself, and transform his, like, appearance, and basically he's supposed to be the nerd guy who has a hot guy vibe, which I don't really understand, but, uh, it's fine, I guess. The world of dating in Japan is a whole different ball game. You know, the individual acts that they do throughout Volume 1 are largely forgettable, but what makes it not forgettable is the characters and the dialogue, because really, none of these characters individually are worth threading home about, but when they all are put together, it creates this really fun dynamic, and I, I can't say enough good things about how the conversations and the like the series of events, it all flows really, really nicely, and it, it creates this like really relaxing, almost chill experience of like reading a rom com about a guy who's really got some balls on him, some confidence, and it's nice because. We had a lot of protagonists back when Origairu was really getting going that kind of didn't have that confidence, so seeing that is kind of refreshing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about all the individual characters because you don't need that. Like, if you really want to find out about all the characters, you can just read the damn book. I'm pretty sure there's a manga. Um, so, you could do whatever you want. Um, but, what I am saying is that I, want to, I wanted to do this as a recommendation because I want to do like more recommendations, but really, like this is nice, and again, it's really hard to like judge a light novel series worth until it gets like two or three volumes in, because whatever it does in volume one is like whatever, but what, what it does going forward from here is really going to prove its worth, right? And the fact that it's got like seven, eight volumes or whatever it is in Japan out right now, I think kind of says enough by itself. I mean, if I had to sell you on this book, like, basically, to get the otaku boy, Kenta, I think, um, to, to start talking to, to Chitose, to Saku, the guy basically takes his baseball bat to the kid's window and jumps in. And is like, sup, fucker. <laughs> We're gonna talk whether you like it or not. I guess what's interesting about it is the whole rom-com angle like every potential rom-com angle is basically set up in chapter one because saku literally in chapter one there are like five girls who would basically strip naked in the classroom and and gobble on his balls if he asked them to so like he, it's basically like we have the whole rom-com angle established already and now it's like they're going to use that 
like all the people involved in that little circle to try to accomplish tasks that are outside of their circle, which is kind of interesting. And it's basically like what Origairu did, right? Because you have Yukino, Hachiman, and Yui, and maybe Iroha later, but like they would go and like solve other people's problems. And that's what's happening in this. I just shook the whole desk, but that's what's happening here. They're going and solving other people's problems. And I imagine that theme is gonna continue going forward, but it is fun. like. Again, I can't say like any of the individual things that the characters do, like they go shopping at one point, they play soccer and basketball or something. Um, like the only thing that really happens is when Saku breaks down <laughs> Kento's window and I was like, yo, <laughs> uh, but there is a really, really good moment at the end. It's like one of those things, you know, when you like do a bunch of random shit and then it all kind of pays off at the end. So I'm not going to spoil too much, but um, basically there's a moment where Saku, uh, stands up for Kenta at the end, and it's a super cool little sequence, um, where Saku basically just <laughs> asserts his Chad dominance over literally everybody. And then, uh, Yuko, the blonde one, comes in, she's like, ah, look at me, I'm hot! And then she, like, kind of backs up Saku a little bit in her own little airhead way. And, uh, it's, it's very cute, like... The payoff at the end is definitely worth it, for sure. And it's really, really charming, and it's really sweet, and it's really cute. Again, more similarities with Origairu in the sense that Saku is actually very well aware that he's peaking in high school. <laughs> um, and uh, he's he's like, man, we are all only stuck in this like one little prefecture. It's our small little world, but it's all we know. And even though I'm at the like top of the hierarchy right now as soon as i'm not in this prefecture any anymore like once i'm out of high school it's a whole new ball game and he has the ability to rise to the top of the hierarchy if he wanted to but it's not the same like you'd have to start from the beginning and you know who knows who you're gonna see once you start college and once you start a job he's very well aware of that fact that he's peaking in high school which is fine. And I feel like that's kind of a Japanese thing to like peak in high school. <laughs> it feels weird to say, but like, you know, considering how much stuff there is, even like fictional works about high school, it's like, oh, that's the best time of your life. Um, you're like you're the most impressionable, you're the newest to romance, the whole nine yards, right? I will say the translation, the English translation, um, took a bit of liberties, I think, at least in what I could managed to translate from the pictures uh like of, with japanese text that i saw it really transforms the experience of this into a more like western style setting as opposed to um the japanese setting because obviously there's a lot of cultural differences in like the high school and the romance worlds compared to uh japan versus in the west right that's inevitable so the translator here did a really good job of like transforming this experience into something that I think Westerners will really get on board with too. Um, so it not only works in Japan, but it also, they did a really good job making it work in English too. But when all is said and done, I do think it's really, really cute. And I might talk about this again uh, once we're a couple of volumes uh, down the line because I'm curious where it goes from here. Um, and Volume 2 has Yuzuki on the cover, so I'm definitely buying that one. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's really cute, and I think it's really sweet. Um, and the payoff at the end is certainly nothing to sniff at. Sniff? Scoff. Nothing to scoff at. There it is. I, I really do think that when the anime rolls around eventually, it's gonna be like this generation's Origairu, like the Origairu of the 2020s. Like, it's gonna be that big. Like, this cast is so well designed and aesthetically pleasing and not to mention fun to watch that I think it's really gonna take off. So I'm just saying, if you take nothing else from this video, watch out for this anime, for Chitose's in the Remune Bottle, because it's people are really gonna like it. So with that said, if you're so inclined, the manga I'm sure is also good. The art style looks quite cute. The light novel will give you a little bit of a more complete experience, um, but the manga is definitely worth it as well. I, I would assume I've never read it. Um, but either one, definitely, if you're so inclined, check out Chitose's in their immune bottle. It's very, very cute. 
everyone like it's it's getting really big in Japan too so it's only a matter of time for them for all I know the anime could be announced tomorrow <laughs> you know like it, it's it's certainly only a matter of time you know like I at this exact moment that you're watching this someone is probably working on it <laughs> it may not have been announced but something somebody is probably working on this anime like right now they're arranging it it's it's gonna happen I'm not the best at like coming up with all of the uh, reasons why you should read something my opinions are kind of just in the dumpster at this point and like oh it's cute and then that's it but it is true so I can give you two reasons why you should read this book. <laughs> can you tell what they are? Can you? <laughs>